Hi guys, so you're going to hear from Laura Piddock, who is a former Labour MP close to Jeremy Corbyn, and she's going to explain why she believes the Labour Party lost, especially in um, Hartlepool. Now, for me, the Labour Party still don't get it. I've been saying long before this election that the Labour Party need a single unifying message. They need a single theme to run on. If you look at other parties around the country, you have the SNP in Scotland who have a single theme, that being independence. The Tories, a single theme, Brexit. What do the Labour Party represent? What do the Labour Parties, what is their theme? What are they running on? Nobody has an idea. Now, back in 2017 and 2019, the Labour Party had a whole range of manifesto pledges. A lot of them were really good. But once again, they didn't have a single theme that they could run on. There wasn't something that people could look at and say, yes, this is what the Labour Party represent. Once again, when you think of the Tories, apart from corruption and cronyism, you think of Brexit. If you look at the uh, Liberal Democrats, even you can say pro-European. If you look at the SNP, of course, in Scotland, independence is their unifying message. Now we're going to hear from Laura Piddock. She was interviewed on LBC by Nick Ferrari. And of course, she doesn't get it. I think the Labour Party have, have got it wrong, to be honest, Nick. The um, leadership of the Labour Party have spent quite a lot of time attacking the left of the Labour Party, an internal dispute that needs to end instead of looking outwards to those working class communities that we uh, so deeply need to represent because we've just come through a crisis and people are desperate for that representation. A crisis that you'll know, you know, you'll have experienced these feelings yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, people were scared about the coronavirus. They were. People are intensely scared about losing their jobs, about maintaining their wages. And I think there was a feeling that uh, Keir Starmer, you know, Angela Rayner, the rest of the leadership, that they were not ferocious enough in taking on this hard, right, relentless Tory government. And so in my... No, what the problem here is that it, she's she's viewing the public in the way she views the Labour Party. So she thinks that the public wanted Keir Starmer and his cabinet, his shadow cabinet, to take on the Conservative Party on issues such as corruption or their right-wing politics. Unfortunately, the public don't care about that. The public need to be convinced to vote for the party, not because they're anti-Tory, but because they represent something. Now, I've said before that the Labour Party should represent something unifying, something that is simple for people to, to latch on to. For example, defend the NHS, protect the NHS, something like that, that they can latch on to and they know exactly what they're voting for. The, NHS is under a huge threat at the moment. It's been sold off. Some of it has already been sold off. The public care about the NHS. I think that should be the message that uh, the Labour Party should be pushing. Protect the NHS. Defend the NHS. This internal f squabbling is, is always going to happen. But you can have internal squabbling as long as people are unified on one particular issue, that being protecting the NHS. There's internal squabbling in every party. In the SNP, there's internal squabbling, but the party is unified behind independence. My view, uh, we have to connect more deeply with those working class communities, deep organizing, no lurch to the right, Nick, that is uh, my overriding message to the leadership of the Labour Party. If we look at the results in Hartlepool under Jeremy Corbyn. <sighs> this, if we look at the results of Jeremy Corbyn, once again, this let's go back instead of let's go forward. She's a Corbynista. She's a supporter of Jeremy Corbyn. And I think she's still angry with the fact that she, what she sees as the Labour Party throwing Jeremy Corbyn under a bus. Jeremy Corbyn was has to take responsibility for the losses in 2019. 
Now, we can blame Brexit, we can blame a whole range of other issues, but you can't just continue to blame things and hope that you can go back to the way things were before. No, you have to understand why the people didn't support you and fix that problem. Um, we were successful in maintaining those seats uh, uh, under hold, him. Hold on, Laura, hold on. You, you... No, so what she's talking about here is about Hartlepool. How, well, in Hartlepool, Jeremy Corbyn held the seat. Yes, there is a reason for that. It was because the vote on the right was split. It's not because people were enthusiastically supportive of Jeremy Corbyn in Hartlepool. It was because the other side, their vote was split. The Conservatives and the Brexit Party were fighting over votes. Now in 2021, the Brexit Party were, no, were not a, a force at all. They were, I don't think they even fielded any candidates. So the um, the Conservatives hoovered up all of those votes. So if you imagine if the Brexit Party hadn't existed in 2019, the Conservatives would have won that seat in 2019. Pretty much. It would, of course, everything, it's difficult to view it from this perspective today, but it's, they would have either won it or would have very come very close to winning it. It's not that Jeremy Corbyn was uh, the saviour there. It's because the other side's vote was split. Now, the same can be, um, can be seen in 2017 when Theresa May created a disaster and it allowed the Labour Party to pick up a, lo a load of seats. You, you can't rely on the other side failing for you to win. You, 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 I'll just Mr. finish Mr. my sentence. No, no, I'm not letting you. I promise. No, but, but Mr. Corbyn led you to mm. a disastrous defeat in the last general election. Sakir has led you to a hideous defeat. Mm. You, you, you've got mm. to change something, surely. If this was yeah, a rugby so, team, you wouldn't put the same squad out every day. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm saying is, it's much more nuanced than. Do, it's much more well, more nuanced than I think you're trying to lead me to. I, I, let me just explain. There is absolutely no doubt that Brexit was a huge factor at the last election. You, mm. you would acknowledge of that. Course. It was made into a Brexit election. Hartlepool, overwhelmingly, a leave So why did he okay? choose and the man? He did. I'm sure he's a good bloke. I have nothing and against the doctor. In, but in, why did he choose him? In 2017, uh, there was a, a commitment to respect the referendum result and, and this is, crucial, this is a crucial and, and a vision for how things can change. So you had two visions. One is we're going to protect the, we're going to respect the Brexit result and we're going to present something else. Unfortunately, the way I view 2019 was that Jeremy Corbyn didn't want to talk about Brexit. He understood that it was an issue on everyone's minds, but he didn't want to talk about it. He avoided talking about it. How do you counter something? How do you counter the elephant in the room? by ignoring it. You have to counter it, and he didn't counter it. He didn't present an alternative. The, whatever was presented as an alternative from the Labour Party was confused. Yes, we're going, to, uh, we're going to respect the vote, but we're going to try to renegotiate the deal. We're going to get a better deal. Um, vote for us, but we won't support it, or we will support it. Boris, Boris Johnson was clear he said, this is what you're voting for, getting Brexit done. Now, of course, it was a lie, and I would prefer politicians not to lie, but you need to have a single message. There was no message in 2017. There was no message in 2019. Something that people can point to when they think of the Labour Party, and that's still the problem today. Do you think the Tories got a vision for how things can change? No. Keir Starmer, Angela Rayner, the rest of the Labour Party need to return to that magnificent manifesto of 2017-2019 without the shroud of Brexit hanging over us. I give up. Honestly, I give up. These people just want to go back to the way things were before. They have set out their stall saying, this is what we believe we can do what we need to do in order to win. It's failed, but instead of actually saying, okay, that was a mistake, let's try something else. They say, no, 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 the problem is somebody else. The problem is Keir Starmer. So when 
And unfortunately, there are people who are supportive of Keir Starmer in the Labour Party who will say, well, it's not Keir Starmer's fault, it was uh, Jeremy Corbyn before that. Yeah, OK, you can argue about this until you're blue in the face, but you need to find a solution. What is the solution? I believe the solution is you need a unifying message. Hire Dominic Cummins if necessary to organise focus groups to discover what message you need to present to the public. Run a campaign to find out, a polling online, I don't know what, but find a way to uh, find a unifying message and then you run with that and in every interview you focus on that message. You bring it round to that message so it's reinforced in the minds of the public this is what the Labour Party represent. Defend the NHS. I think this is probably the best way unless somebody can think of something better. I think this is the best approach to dealing with the Conservatives. The Conservatives want to sell off the NHS. The NHS were there when we needed them. The public have still a huge amount of support for the NHS. Uh, frontline workers, the clapping for the NHS. The, the, the Labour Party need to say, we're the party of the NHS. And I'm using the NHS as an example. I'm not saying that's the way they need to go. They need to find out how they should approach the, the way forward. But something like the NHS is something that the public can rally around. And if you can tell the public, look, by voting for the Conservatives, you're destroying the NHS. Something that has been there for us during the pandemic. Something that we want to hand over to our children and grandchildren. And the party in power, Boris Johnson's party, want to destroy that. They want to sell it off to the Americans. They want to privatise it. Either uh, explicitly or implicitly. But there needs to be some unifying message. And of course there's going to be squabbling within the party. That's natural. But there has to be one unifying message going forward. And until the Labour Party have that, then they're going to continue to lose seats, um, both in local government and in the House of Commons. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?